Welcome to Wasuma's Garden. Just wanted to let you know that during this crazy time, we are doing our best to keep this moving and shaking. Of course, we have our famous Miss Belinda, and she's rallied more friends to come and help us out. I uh, want to let you know, those of you who are new to our, our garden, it started in 2013. Uh, kindergarten teachers like myself and Miss Frank, we wanted a kindergarten garden. So what did we do? We said it out loud and we had some parents who bought in. So we have uh, the West Falls helped out, the Greenwoods, the Stevens, the Mattis family, the Smith family. We received grants from Jamba Juice when they were here. Uh, the Sierra, the, the Rotary that's here, we got grants from. People in this community have donated supplies for us or they've discounted for us to build this wonderful place for your children to learn. So what we're going to be doing this year is we're going to have some virtual classes and you'll get to see them on Class Dojo. Uh, Miss Belinda and her teachers will be showing you some things in the garden and hopefully you tune in and see what we're doing here. Uh, as you see, we look good and we are full of cardboard right now. That's helping us keep those weeds down. However, we do need some help. This garden is open. So if you feel like you want to come by and help put some mulch down, we've got wood chips over here and it just needs to be spread out. Anyway, we love our garden. We love our classes and it's a wonderful experience for our littles. Have a great day and hope you tune in. Bye. Welcome to the Wasuma Garden, students and families. My name is Miss Belinda and I'm a master gardener. The Master Gardeners are filming a video telling, to tell you what's been happening in the garden since last spring and to show you pictures of flowers that are blooming and vegetables that are growing in the garden right now. The Master Gardeners and parent volunteers were working with students last March in the garden. The first week in March, kindergartners planted succulents and small cups and first and second grade students worked with parent volunteers to move strawberry plants out of one of the boxes and into red cups. The second week in March, third, fourth, and fifth grade students uh, started cuttings of sage, manzanita, and geraniums and put them in flats of perlite. We were planning to give them to parents for Mother's Day, but then school closed. The good news is that teachers and parent volunteers and master gardeners planted the strawberry plants in an empty garden box in the Wasuba garden, and they put the cuttings of sage into tubs outside of the garden fence. The first week in May, Teachers, parent volunteers, and master gardeners pulled weeds in the garden box and they planted seeds and store-bought plants in the garden boxes. They're growing there still. The bad news is that the weeds were in the walkways were soon taller than the plants in the garden boxes. So teachers and parent volunteers and master gardeners decided to use sheet mulching. Sheet mulching is layers of cardboard that's covered with chips or mulch and the purpose is to control weeds and it also helps to hold moisture in the garden boxes and nutrients. But in the Wasuma garden the purpose of the cardboard and sheet mulching is to control weeds. Soon you'll see pictures of flowers blooming and vegetables growing in the garden. You'll also see, so see, also see rows and rows of cardboard that are controlling the weeds in the garden boxes. Hi, I'm Miss Sharon and I'm one of the master gardeners that has helped you out in the garden at Wasuma. Today we're here in my garden and I'm going to show you what I did to try to keep the weeds at bay so I didn't have to weed all the time. Last year when I did my vegetable garden, the weeds ended up taking over and so I had to find a way to take care of it. If you look at this bed right here, this is what happens when you're not weeding all the time. This has been taken over by weeds. This is my asparagus 
And I can't do sheet mulching there like I did in the rest of my garden. And I wasn't able to keep up with the weeds. But in this garden, I have what's called sheet mulching. And what sheet mulching is, is we've taken cardboard, and you can see some of it here that still hasn't, hasn't deteriorated, and we put cardboard down in the bed, either on top of the weeds that have been cut down or pull the weeds out first and then put the cardboard in. So the cardboard we use is just the boxes that we've got from Amazon or whoever we get our, our stuff from nowadays when we're ordering online, and you just lay it down on the ground. Now one thing I found while I was doing this is that um, if you're not overlapping the cardboard, you're going to get weeds in between. And actually, this plant here, even though it's another um, Oregon grape root, it is a weed that came up in between where the cardboard was just put together and not over the top of itself. So after you put all the cardboard down on the bed, then you're going to cover it with mulch. Okay, and you can see this is the mulch I put down here. And this area of this bed is pretty dry because I don't have any plants right there, so it's not being watered. Um, but there's a number of advantages to having the sheet mulching. Now, I did it for the, for the weeds, but what I found out since then is I don't have to water as much as I used to because it helps keep the ground dry underneath. It's actually helping the plants grow better. They're not competing with the weeds. And also, they're not, also they're getting more nutrients from the ground. This is helping to keep the nutrients in. And the cardboard in some of my other beds that are more wet is already deteriorated and I'll have to do it again. But it helps, um, the, the weeds will actually decompose underneath the cardboard and put nutrition into the soil. Um, so that there's more plant, more nutrients for the plants. And what that is doing for my plants so far is I have less um, bugs and less disease than I've had in the past on my plants. They seem to be hardier plants and they're growing better than they ever have before. So I highly recommend using the um, sheet mulching in your garden. Now what I did after I put the sheet mulch down is I had to cut a hole where I wanted my plants to be planted. So if you water the garden first, it helps make the cardboard soft and then you're able to um, cut through the cardboard easier in order to put your plants in. But it's very simple to just cut through the cardboard, dig your hole, put your plants in, and you're ready to go. And I have had to weed a few weeds out, but very few, very few come up. And uh, it's just been wonderful for me. Hi, I'm Miss Carol. I'm a Madera County Master Gardener. Today, I'm at the Wasama School Garden, which is absolutely lovely. I want to talk to you about a type of planting, which is called companion planting. Companion planting is when you plant certain plants together for the benefits they give one another. Many times, these benefits are Shading, protecting from the wind, keeping the soil moist. Also, it gives a habitat for beneficial insects, like let's say ladybugs, which will go close to a plant, need a place sort of to be until they start taking away all the aphids from the plant. They also many times put off odors, and we'll talk about that towards the end. But today, I want to talk about three sister planting. So many, so companion planting has been around many, many years. And I want to tell you a legend or a story. And the story is from the Native American tribe of the Iroquois. The Iroquois are from northeastern United States. They believe that to plant the three sisters together, they were inseparable. They also provided so many benefits to their soil. And the Native Americans were living on what they planted. So they had to have fertile soil. They had to have plants that grew well. And then they wanted plants that also put something back into the soil for future generations to plant in. 
So today we're going to talk about the three sisters. So the three sisters are corn, or as the Native Americans called it, maize. The corn grows tall. It provides shade to the, the soil below, and it also holds moisture in the ground. Then we're going to talk about planting beans. And the beans are able to climb up. So the corn is used like a ladder. And then we're going to talk about squash or pumpkins. And I'll show you those plants in a moment. So when the Native Americans planted, they made a mound of soil. And in that mound of soil, they would put a very small fish. So they were providing fertilizer immediately for the seeds of the corn and the beans and the squash to grow in. But they also planted the beans very close to the corn and the squash. The beans, the gooms, have bacteria in their roots. And in that bacteria, they're able to pick up nitrogen in the air. So it's feeding the corn and feeding the squash. The squash growing at the foot of your corn and all through the garden provide shade. It provides a protection from more weeds in the garden. And you have this abundance of, of them protecting one another in the garden. So at the end of the harvest, when all the corn has been harvested and all the squash and all the beans have fed the tribe, they take, the, the Native Americans would take all the leaves and all the stems and all the squash and cut it all up and put it right back into the mound, therefore fertilizing and making an abundant area for years for future gardeners people to feed their families. Here at Wasuma, you have a compost bin. And in that compost bin last year, some pumpkins were put in there. And they decomposed in the compost. And today, the compost bin is growing squash. So companion planting is sort of like everything working together to provide an abundance of food, of fertile soil and and also the exercise you get being out here doing this so thank you so much and i hope to see you soon in your garden